chapter two. Uh, this chapter is about functions. Also, chapter three will be about uh, polynomial functions. And uh, most of the sections that you will study in this course from now until the end, and also in uh, in Math 002, in Math 102, in, in, in the whole uh, calculus and pre-calculus courses, the most repeated word is function. If you search in any book, in any mathematical uh, book, you will find that function is the most word that is used. It is like the trend in mathematics. What is uh, the function? Uh, how to evaluate it, how to deal with it? What are the properties? Uh, if you look at the outcomes of this course, one of the main outcomes of this course is how to uh, sketch the graph of functions, how to evaluate them, how to analyze their properties and so on. So in this chapter, we have uh, six sections, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and 2.5, 2.6, and 2.7. If you look at them, they are about the functions and their graph, how to deal with functions and how to sketch their graph. Let's start with uh, the definition of function. What is it? Uh, from where it comes, what is the idea of function? And what is it, how to evaluate it, and how to represent a function, and how to find the domain and the range. We will not focus on the range, but mainly we will focus on the domain in this section. Later, we will focus on the domain, on the range. Now, what do you mean by a function? A function, you, uh, you can define it in several ways. One of the basic ways to define a function is what? This one, it is a rule that describes how one quantity depends on another. Like what? Height, the height is a function of what? Of age. How to understand it? The height, your height, depends on your age. Also the temperature depends on the date. So it is a function, the temperature is a function of date. The post age is a function of weight. How, mu how much you will pay when you send it by mail? It depends on how many kilograms you have. Who can give me uh, other examples about something depends on another thing? Like uh, when you travel, yes. the distance de depends on speed. the time, the speed. Also, there, this is uh, another example. You, we, you may have uh, one quantity depends on more than one yes. quantity. But here we are talking about uh, the function that depends on one. So it is one uh, one variable uh, functions. Yes. How many people? This depends on what? Uh, about, uh... So give me one quantity that depends on uh, another quantity. From mathematics, for example, the area of the circle depends on what? Radius. The radius. So the, the area is a function of the radius. When you change the radius, the, 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 the area will be changed, okay? And so on, uh, like the number of bacteria, the number of bacteria in a lab, if you have a, a cultural uh, uh, lab, it is a function of time. Our life, it is a function of time. Okay, let's, um, so what, how we will represent uh, the functions? Uh, usually we use uh, uh, small letters, the lower case, F, G, H, and so on to represent a function. Let's take an example. For example, we can use the letter F to represent a rule as follows. F is a rule that says square the number, Ya Musa. So F, the rule that says square the rule, the, the number. Like what? When we say F, F, apply, apply F on two. So it, it says what, Abl uh, square what, square two. So F of two or F when you apply it on two, you will get two to the power two, which is what? Four. What is F of three, which means apply the rule F on the number three. It will be three squared. It means square the three. So it will be uh, nine square four it will be so in general, we will say that this function is what? F 
of x equals to what? x squared. x could be any real number here. So now this is a function that depends on x. Square x, if you have x, you can square it. In general, a function f is a rule that assigns to each number or to each element x in a set A. So we have now, we have a set of numbers. It could be all the real numbers. We have a set A. Now, when we have a rule that is F, F is the rule that assigned for each, you have here several elements. So it assigned for each one here, for each element here, exactly one element called f of x and a set b. For example, this function f, it maps two to four. So it assigns four for two, three to what? To nine, four to what? To 16. So if you have here, for example, x, what you will get in, 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 in the another set b. So we have here another set b. We will have here what x squared. What is this function that we use? x squared. So when you have a number, you will square it. So we have now two sets. We have x in the set A and it's f of x. Here we have f of x. In the set B, we have f of x. Here we have x. The set here is A. Let me repeat this again here. Uh, I'd like you to focus on this. Each element in A, it has exactly one and only one. This is the meaning of exactly one element in B. Let me give you an example. Look at this uh, mapping here. We have a set A, we have one, two, three, four, and a set B here. Now we are assigning one to 20, two to 20, the image, which means that what? How can we understand this? What is F at one? 20. What is F at two? 20. What is F at three? 30, and so on, okay? Is this a function? Why? Let's check. It assigns to each element in the set A. Each element is assigned, look. It assigned exactly one element. How many elements assigned for one? Only one. How many uh, elements assigned for two? Only one. So when you have, think about it like input, input, output. So the inputs, the inputs are here. These are the inputs. And these are what? The outputs. So now you should have what? What is the, the, the meaning of that? That for each input, you have only one output. So here, when we put x equals to one, what we will get? One output or more than one output? One. Only one. So here, you said that it is not a function, but indeed it is what? It is a function. It is a function. No problem if two, if two elements, they have the same image, but they still have one output. The problem will be when you have one input that has two outputs. This will not be a function. It will be a, a relationship, but it is not a function. So this is what is special about functions. You will guarantee that if you uh, bought one input, you will get only one output. So you, you can expect the result. It is not arbitrary. You don't know what you will get. No, you will be sure that you will get something. One, exactly one thing. So this is a function. What about the next one, the one here? Where is the problem? Uh, at two. What is f at two? What is the value of the function at two? We don't know. So it is not, you cannot, this, this relationship, it is not a function. The function will give you one output. So there among, among all the relationships, the rule that assigned for each element in the in A, only one and one element in B. So this is not a function. Uh, again, you can think about it uh, using the machine diagram. The, fun uh, the function, you can think about it like a machine that you give it input and it will do processing and then give you the output. And it will give you for each one you will get for each one uh, input, it will give you only Output. One output. If you get two outputs, it is not a function. Great. Now, uh, how to read it, Yashabab? We read it formally f of x. This is of f of x. 
if you evaluate it or f at x, you can read it f, f at x. But usually when we replace x by a number, let's say two, we say f at two or f of two. It is up to you. You can read it in, in both. And it is called, of course, what is f at, uh, at two? What is this f at two? It means the value of the function at two. So the value of the function at two or the image of x under f, the output of f under uh, of x out uh, under f. The set A, do you remember the set A that we said we have set e A here and another set B here? And we have f that maps these uh, numbers from A to, to B. The set A here, we call it the domain of the function. And the set B, we will call it the range. So here, the, the, the set of the inputs, it is the domain. The outputs are the range. Clear. I mentioned it here again, the range of the, uh, the range of F is the set of all the possible values of F that comes out or that varies throughout the domain. Give me X, give me X in the domain. Give me X in the domain. Let's say this is the domain of F, which is A. So give me F, X in A. What I will do, I will apply the function F of X and all the values F of X will be, will be the domain. This will give me the range. Now uh, let's think about it uh, like a rule, like an equation. So when we say f of x, let's say that we have here x and we have here f of x. So we will call f of x equals to y. So this will map x to y. So you have x and you will have image y here. So y, it is a function of x. x here, uh, y depends on x. Like what? Like y equal x squared. Now, y depends on x. When you change x, y will be changed. So we call x in this case, independent variable. So it is free. X here could be in a real number. Like here, x could be in a real number. But when you, when you put x equals to two, you cannot control y. What will be y if x is two? Y will be what? Two to the power two, it will be? So y, y it uh, depends on what? On X. So this is why we will call it dependent variable. Variable, it means that it is varying, changing. So here, Y equals F of X. So what we can do, for example, we can write F of X equals to X squared, which is the same if we write it like Y equals to what? To y X squared. We can use this or this. You should understand from both that we are, uh, we are uh, talking about Y as a function of, of X. Now the independent variable will be where? It will be in the domain. And the dependent will be in the range. Look how we define the, the, the domain. The domain is what? X values, such that F of X is what? A real number. Now the range is what? The range is Y. It is about Y. Such that X in, is where? In the? domain so you will take x in the domain you should have y as a real number look at the definition i think you may understand it better from here the domain of a function is the set of all the x values for which f is what defined all again what is the domain the set of all the x values for which the function is what defined so it is the values of x such that y is a real number what is the range? The range of the function y equals f of x is all the corresponding y values. It is the set of all the outputs. And the domain is the set of all the inputs. Let's uh, have an example about this. Uh, f of x, we have a rule here or a formula. f of x equals x squared plus four. How to describe this function? This function, what, what does it say? It says what? Square and then add four. So this is, how, what, what does it work? This is the, 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 the job of this function. What does it do? Uh, it it, uh, it uh, square and then add four. Find, evaluate, evaluate the function at three. What is F of three? 
9 plus 4. So it is 13. So when x is 3, y is 13. What is f at negative 2? Square negative 2, then add 4. It will be 8. So this means, of course, that y is 8 when x is negative 2. Now, if at square root of 5, it will be 9. Great. The last one, find the domain and the range of this function. This is so important now. What is the domain? What is what is the set of all the possible inputs? X here could be in a real number? Yes. There is no problem. You can put X in a real number. If there is a problem, it will be where? When you have a denominator that will be zero, or when you have uh, even radical square root or fourth root, and what is inside it is negative. This is the only problem that we have. Otherwise, no problem at all, right? So the domain is all the real numbers. So let me mention it here, that the domain of F consists of all the possible inputs for F. And in our case, we can evaluate this formula at any real number. So because of that, we will say that the domain, the domain of this function is the set R. Also, we can say that it is negative infinity to infinity. I prefer to use this notation, Ishabel. It is not used in your textbook, but I think you can understand it. What we mean by this? Domain of the function f. If we have a function g, I will say domain of g. So the domain of f here, you can say that it is equals to r, or you can say it equals what? The open interval negative infinity to infinity. Right? Now, uh, let's come to the range now. The, it is, uh, I, I said, I think as a big, at the beginning, we will not focus on the range too much in this section because the best way to find the range is to sketch the graph. We will see later how to sketch the graph of a function. But let's try because it is not, it is not difficult, Ashabat. So our function is what? X squared plus four. It is Y equals to X squared plus four. You can think about it this way. Now, when you think about the range, you will think about X or about Y? About y. about y. The question is, what is Y here? This is the question. Now, let's start because what is Y? Y, it is X squared plus four. So what is X at the beginning? X is in a real, in a real number. What will happen if you square it? It will be greater than or equal zero, right? Now, what will happen if you add four for both sides? Um, greater than or equal. It will be greater than or equal. What is this? This is y. Y greater than or equals what? So what is the range? What is the range of this function? Here it is. This is the range of this function from four to infinity. You got it? Okay. This will be so easy Shabab, when we sketch the graph later. But now for this specific one, it is not uh, that hard. Of course, one way, one way to find the, the range is to build the function. Start from X, work on X until you get Y. Then you can find the, the range. But of course, uh, it is not always possible, we will, as we will see later. So the, the range of the function consists of all the possible outputs. And uh, what I mentioned here, it is uh, explained also for you here to be easy for you to revise. So this is the range. Look, the range is about y. What is y? Y such that y is greater than equals four. Now let's come to the uh, second uh, or the third part of this uh, uh, section, which is about evaluating functions. How to evaluate a function? By the way, this is the easier part. How to evaluate? If you have a function, let's say that our function is uh, this, f of x equals to three x squared plus x minus five. How to evaluate this function at uh, different values of x? You will use what? Substitution. Replacing, you will replace x by whatever. This is x, this is x, this is x. You can just, just fill in the blanks. So if it is two, you will put two, 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 two. If it is negative one, you know when you have negative numbers, it is better to use negative uh, brackets and so on. So it is just about 
substituting a number in, in, in the placeholder, in the space, in, in, uh, in, in, instead of x. Let's take an example. F of x, 3x squared plus x minus 5. Evaluate each function, uh, uh, each function, uh, evaluate each function value. What is f at negative 2? And instead of x, we will both negative 2. Easy? So easy. So now simplify, you will get. So this, this is y, Shabab. This is the y value now. This is the x value, the, the corresponding, the output here, the input is negative 2, the output is what? Is 5. F at zero, negative five, all right, easy. Uh, if at four, if at a half, okay? So not difficult, just you will use the substitution. Aha, uh -huh. we have now, uh, before going to this, how many rules we have here for this function? We have only one, one rule. So we know how to substitute, just replace X by the value that you have. In some functions in the real life problems, we have a function that is defined by more than one, one rule, like, like this one. This kind of functions, we call them piecewise defined functions, like this one. It has two rules. So it, 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 about, it is about uh, when, you, when uh, it depends on X, when it is greater than something, less than something equals to something greater than something. So what is the piecewise defined function? It is a function that is defined by different formulas, by different rules on different parts of what? Of the domain. Here, this function is not piecewise. It is not piecewise defined function. It is one piece, one rule. But here you may have more than one piece. So we call it piecewise. So you have different rules for the function. Let me give you this, this one, this, this example, by the way, it is not excluded, but uh, it is not included. This is why I put it inside uh, this red frame. But the idea of it is included. Let me just to explain for you to understand what we mean by piecewise defined. Let's take an example uh, and uh, about the, the, the mobiles that we are using and the gigabytes. We, all of us, we have, uh, of course, uh, plans that we are using uh, when we have uh, internet from our uh, data internet from our uh, mobile let's say that there is a mobile or a cell phone plan that costs uh, 39 real a month 39 a dollar the plan includes two gigabytes of free data if you pay 39 you will get two gigabytes free okay but you will be you will pay 15 per gigabyte if for any additional data you will use so if you use more than two gigabytes, you will pay 15 for each gigabyte, additional one. The monthly charges uh, are function of what? Of the number of how many uh, additional you will pay. It is of course a function of what? Of gigabytes. It depends how many gigabytes you will use. If you use one or one and a half or two, you will pay what? 39. But if you use the three, what you will pay? 39 plus 15. If you, uh, if you use four gigabytes, fives, and so on. So this will be a function of what? Of gigabytes. The amount of uh, reals or dollars that you will pay, it is a function of gigabytes. Now, it is a constant. Whatever you will use from zero to two, it is the, a constant. You will pay 39. So this is what they, may, what we, they write that the, the C here is the function the C, it is the function, the cost, the money that you will pay. The cost function here, it is 39 if you using gigabytes for between zero and two. But after two, it will be 39 plus 15 multiplied by X minus two. Why they use this, of course, to find out how. If, if X is one, if you use three, if you use three gigabytes, what will be this? Three minus, minus two, it will be one. So 15, you will add plus 15. If it is four, this will be what? Two. So this is the term that will determine, of course, because you may use uh, 3.5. So this will be what? 1.5 uh, multiplied by what? By 15 and so on. Okay. So uh, how to, what is C, what is C of, of 0.5? What is the cost of uh, a half giga? 39. 
What is the cost of two giga? 39. So the, what we did, we locked here. Where is 0 0.5? It is here. Where is two? It is here. So I will use this one. Now, what is uh, C at four? It is here. Four is here. Four is here. So you will spot for, uh, X equals to four here. So first we look at the value of the input. If it is between zero and two, we will use the first branch. We will use the first, the first piece. If it is uh, greater than two, as we have in the th last one, we will use the second piece of this function. So you will pay, if you use four gigabytes, you will, you will pay 69. I think you got the idea what we mean by these wise defined functions. Please give me what is the value of the function at negative five? What is F at negative five? In which branch, in which piece we, we will uh, put X equals to negative five? You need to ask yourself, negative five, is it here or here or here? In which branch? X is uh, negative five is less than one. So you will use this. So who can give me the, the value? If at negative five will be? It will be negative five all to the power two plus two multiplied by negative five. It will be 25 minus 10. So it is what? 15. Check your answer. It is 15. What is F at half? Uh, Are you sure X is it, is it between negative one and one? Yeah. Yes. So both X here equals to a half, what you will get? Oh. A half. So F of a half is a half. Uh, F of two? Is it, it is what? It is a constant, this one. Whatever, whatever X is greater than one, we will call this constant function. It is a negative one. F at two, negative one. F at three, negative, negative one. All the values for all the corresponding values are negative one. Uh, we have here a word that will be used in later in, in the calculus, the net change. We mean by net change here, uh, the total change, the complete change. You can think about it like this. Uh, the net change is the value in the value of the function F is the, as the input change from A to B, it is just F at B minus F of A. Let me give you an example, it will be much clearer. If you have F of X equal X squared, find the net change of the value of F between the given inputs. What is the net change from one to three? The net change from one to three will be what? According to the definition. Will be F at three minus F at one. Notice here that A is less than B. Now the net change will be what? Three squared, what is F at three? Nine. Minus one squared, so it will be nine minus, eight. it is eight. The net change is eight. What is the net change from negative two to two? Uh, it will be zero, because it will be negative two squared minus two, sorry, two squared minus negative two squared. It will be four minus four, it will be zero. Uh, evaluating a function. Now, we know how to evaluate the function at a number. Also at any, any constant. What is the value of the function at A, this function? You will just replace X by what? By A. What is the value of the function at negative A? You will replace X by, by negative A. And then simplify. Here you need to simplify. What is negative A to the power two? A squared multiplied by two and this then negative three A negative A. You should simplify always yesterday. Uh, the value of the function at A plus H. You will replace X by A plus H. And then simplify, you will expand. Then combine like terms if you have. Let's now find this. And this one, by the way, it has a special name and we use this, of course, in calculus. You will use it in math 101. Uh, how to find this, Ashabab? You need first to find what is F at A plus H minus F at A and then H. So you need to find this, then this one, then subtract, then divide by what? By H. So this is what you will, we will have. We have this already. No, we don't. No, we have it. Here it is. Here it is. 
minus f of a, this is f of a. Be careful, you have negative here, we need to distribute. We have two students, they are late. Please remind me about it, Abdurrahman. Wake up. Okay, now simplify. Look what you will have. After simplifying and canceling the like terms. Now you can simplify more, by the way. You can take H as a common factor. This is what you will do, by the way, in, uh, in, um, in math 101. H here is not zero. You will study in math 101 when H approaches zero when you study the limits, when H goes to zero. This will be, of course. Now, when it is not zero, we can cancel it. Take H as a common factor, then cancel it, you will have this. Now, when H is goes to zero, this will be 4A plus three. You will use this to define the derivatives of functions. It has a name, by the way, we will give it a name so far. It is called the difference quotient. Why do they call it like that? Because you have different here, you have difference, and you have what? Quotient. So we call it the difference quotient. So how to find the difference quotient uh, of this function? You need to find what? F at, the at x plus h minus f of x over h. We have this. It is already given. Here it is. Now you need now to find x, f at x plus h. You would replace what? x by x plus then expand, simplify. Now you will subtract. This is step number two. You will subtract f of x plus h from, uh, you will subtract f of x from f of x plus h. Simplify and combine the like terms. You have this will be canceled with this, this one with this one, and you have this. Now you will divide by what? By h. You can take h as a common factor. Since h is not zero, you can take h as a common factor, cancel it. That's it. We are working, by the way, in, on Math 101 again. Now, let's summarize uh, the ways that we can use to represent the function. We can use, uh, we can describe or represent the function uh, verbally by using words, by describing the function. Like what? Do you remember? Square and then add what? Which means what? Like you can use algebraic formula by explicit formula, explicit formula. Like f of x equals to x squared plus, we can use uh, rules or equations to represent function. Or we can use a table of values. How is that? So, and it is not practical to use table of values. We will use it just to sketch the graph. So you can uh, use a table of values, some values for x here, and the corresponding values of f are here. Like you will understand what we, what we did here. We squared and then we add what? We squared, so this is this is x. This is in fact x squared plus four. What you have in the second column? In both out, both of course, and you can the 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 uh, the, the fourth way is uh, to use uh, visually to to have a graph, and we will talk about that later more in details. So you can also both these you can draw the the order pairs here. So look negative two and what negative two and negative one and five here it is negative one and five let's say here then zero and four and so on then connect these points with with the curvy curvy uh, graph you will have your graph the domain let's go back to the domain because it is in fact uh, the main two ideas of this section is how to find the domain how to find the difference quotient as you can see in the in the old exam questions and also the easy problems of uh, finding the range. Do you re remember what we, how we define the domain of a function? It is the set of all inputs for this function. So the domain of the function is, is what? Is the domain of its algebraic expression. What is the domain of F? It is the domain of the, uh, the, this algebraic expression. And we know how to find the domain of algebraic expression from section what? You remember? From which section we have studied? Where we have studied the domain before? P7. In B7, we have studied the algebraic, uh, the, the domain of algebraic expression. So now, so easy. The domain of the function will be the domain of the algebraic expression that represent this function. So it is the set of all the real numbers 
for which the expression is what? Defined, Defined as a real number. We can uh, use the notation like this. The domain of the function, it is x, x values, such that f of x is a real number. What is the domain of this function? X, uh, four, four, four. x equals four? No, no, no. no. The domain is all the real numbers that make this expression defined. Is x, you mean the opposite. You mean all the real numbers except, except four. Any real number other than four, other, other than four is, 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 is in the domain. So the domain of this function it is x, all the values of x such that x minus four is what? Zero. Not zero, which means that all the values of x such that x is not four. So this is the domain. You can write it as an uh, interval if you want. From negative infinity to four, open from four to infinity. What is the, the domain of this function? G of x equals to square root of x. All the real numbers except zero, only zero. The problem is only at zero. What is the problem at one? We have a plan, Shabab. You need to remember what we did in B7. What we have here, we have what here? What we have? Square root. We have square root. What is inside this square root? The radicands must be? No. Must be non-negative. Positive or zero? So this means that what is inside? What is inside this? So the, the domain of this function, the domain of G will be X, the values of X such that what is inside greater than or equal zero, which means what? The closed interval zero and what? And the infinity, if you go to the numbers line, this is zero included greater than or equal zero. It is just a, re a repetition for B7, okay? Let's take another function. One over square root of X. H of X equals to one over square root of H. X. Because it is in the denominator, we, we have here two conditions. What is inside the root is greater than or equal zero, but the root itself, it is not what? It is not zero. How to combine these together? The combination of these two conditions together is this. X is greater than zero. So if X is greater than zero, it will not be zero. And it will be, of course, positive, no problem. So it will be X such that X is greater than zero. Which open, will be open then. We, we will just exclude the zero. Now, what is the domain of this function? X over one minus square root of X. Yeah, think about it, Shabab, and I will ask you about it, please. You need to find it. Is it, it is easy. Can you tell me, Musa, what is it? Uh, uh, greater than one. one. No. Greater than or equal to one. No. What do you have here, Shabab? I told you. No problem. The domain initially, initially, the domain is all the real numbers. Okay. If you have a denominator, this denominator shouldn't be zero. If you have radical, even radical, if you have square root, what is inside the square root should be non-negative. This is what you should think about. Work in, in your notes. You cannot find the domain that easy just by looking at it. Guys. Well, again, we will do the same. Let me, let me show you. What do we have? We have a radical. Am I right? So what is inside the radical? What is inside here? It should be greater than or equal zero. Is that right? And and what, what we have a denominator. What is the denominator? One minus square root of x. This is the denominator. This shouldn't be what? Not zero. This is the domain. So if you if I ask you about the domain. Just write this, x such that x is greater than zero. This will be the half of the points you will get. You will get the half of the marks if you did this. You, it means that you understand what we mean by, the, by domain. Now you need to simplify more. So this will be equals to what? x such that x is greater than zero. And how to solve this? It will be square root of x not equals to what? To one. Are you with me? 
Now, how to, how, this, is, this is solved. This is ready. How to solve this? Square both sides. Okay, so what you will get? What is the number that S square root is one? No, who said negative and positive one? No, <laughs> only one number. You cannot have both X here negative one. Come on guys. So X is what? Not, not one. If X is not one, the square root of X will not be one. So what is that? All the real numbers greater than or equal to zero except one. So how to write the domain? The domain will be what? From zero up to where? If you want to write the answer in the right way, what you should do, you should draw the numbers line. This is negative infinity, this is infinity, this is zero, this is one. So what we have, X greater than or equal to zero, this is closed, greater than or equal to zero, but not what? One. You should remove one, so it should be opened at one. So how to write it? The domain of the function F will be closed zero up to where? One open, union one open to where? infinity this is the domain of this one again keep in mind no denominators are zero no rad no radicands are uh, negative and you will be of course able to find the domain i bought the solution here for you with details we need to practice more on that i think we have time to practice by solving some recitation exercises about the domain um let's oh we have more one one more example what is the domain of the first one? What do we have? Again, think about two things. Do denominator is not zero. So and square root radical radicands are not negative. So what do we have here? Do we have uh, radicands? No, we have denominator. So this denominator shouldn't be zero. So what we will do to know where it is zero. Remember B7, what we did in B7, factor. Now you can know where it is zero, at zero and at what? So the domain will be all the real numbers, except what? Zero and one. So it will be from negative infinity to zero, remove zero, from zero to one, remove one, from one to infinity. For this one, now we will go back to uh, section 1.7, 1.8. So what we have here, we have radical. What is inside this radical, the radicand should be greater than or equal zero. This is the domain. The domain will be nine minus X squared, not the square root, please, because this is a common mistake. Some of you, they said, they said this, greater than or equal zero. This is trivial. This is not what we are, it is already for sure this is greater. This is always greater than or equal zero. This is not the domain. The domain is what is inside. It is about the X value. In fact, this is the Y, not X. So you should write what is inside the radical greater than or equal. What do you have here? What is this? What is this? It is inequality, linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear inequality. How to solve nonlinear inequalities? 1.7. Or you can use the ideas of 1.8. How? You can move X squared, it will be easier. Move X squared to it, but it is similar to X squared greater than or equals negative nine. Then multiply both sides by what? By negative one and it change. It will be like this, here it is, the same. Now what we will do next? Both are what? Both are positive. So we can take the square root. If one of them is, we are not sure about it, we cannot do that. So what we will get next? X greater than. I wish I, I, I could have this answer true one day. Please, Yashaba, please. The, the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x less than three. What is this? This is 1.8. So, so what? X is what? Less than or equals three and greater than or equals negative. Three. This is the domain. Now, if you bought, if you bought any number, any number between negative three and three or equals to negative three and three, you will get a real number. But if you bought any number greater than three or less than negative three, this will be undefined. This will be negative. And it will not be a real number. What about the last one, Ishabar? T over square root of T plus one. What is the domain? Please give me an answer. 
what is inside the radical must be greater than or equal to zero. But here it is, it is, we have another condition. What is the another condition? That the, the denominator, this is the denominator, is not zero. So this means that what? That square both sides. This means that this is not what? Zero. Is that right? Because the square root will not be zero if what is inside it is not zero. Square both sides. Now, what is the meaning of this? How can you write these two conditions as one condition? T plus one greater than or equal zero, but not zero. Then just like that. So just you will say that T plus one is greater than, that's it. So this is the condition that we need here. T plus one is greater than zero. How to solve it? It is linear inequality. How to solve it? Just add negative two for both, a uh, negative one for both sides. So it will be T greater than negative. It will be the open interval from negative one to where? To infinity. Okay. That's it, Shabab. This is the summary of uh, section uh, 2.1. What is the function? How to find the domain? How to find the range? How to deal, how to evaluate the function? How to uh, deal with the piecewise defined functions? and how to find the net change and the difference quotient. Mostly I, according to the old exams, this is, you will have a question about this for sure because you will use it in math 101 and you will have a question about the domain, about the range, about the value, how to find the value of piecewise defined functions. We will have a look at the old exams, but before that we have time to practice. Yes, we do. Uh, what is the domain of the first function? We will put what is inside greater than or equal zero. So what we will do after that, Yamusi? 1.8, this is section 1.8. Yes. Uh, x, uh, bigger than five. x bigger than five. Is there any problem if x is less than five? Come on guys, this is absolute value. Absolute value greater than or equal what? Zero, it is always, always true. X here could be in a real number, Ashaba. Think about in a real number. Remember 1.8, please. <coughs> this is of course always true because the absolute value is always greater than or equal to zero. So the domain of this function is all the real numbers. All the real numbers. X here, what is the, give me one X that will uh, cause a problem here. We have a radical. What is inside the radical should be positive. The absolute value is always positive. Okay, or zero, it is always not negative. Now for the second one, you need to factor. So it will be what? X to the power four over what? X plus three times X minus two. So uh, we'll, the, re, the, the domain will be all the real numbers except, except two and negative three. So you will remove negative three and uh, two from the domain. What about the C? You, you need what is inside the radicand, you need, you need x squared minus 2x minus 8 greater than or equal or equal zero. How to solve it? This is 1.7. Factor, not move 8, please, please, please. No, if 8 is here, you have to move it to the left-hand side. You need to factor, what is this? x uh, plus 2 times x minus 4, is that correct? Next, what you will do? You will make a table of signs. Do you remember? Yeah. You will put here negative two, you'll have four. You will do the, uh, the table of signs and you will see where it is what? Where it is what? Where it is positive. And this will be what? The domain. So notice that we are back to 1.7 and 1.8. So we can give you a question from 2.1, but indeed you will use 1.7 and 1.8. This will be the domain and uh, we will continue practicing, inshallah, in about about 2.1 next class. Thank you and see you, inshallah, on...